Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So today I am going to talk about a very important topic that is <coughs> dopamine, dobutamine, and norepinephrine, as well as epinephrine. Which one can be used in which patient, and what is the dosage of each of them, and how they differ in mechanism of action. So if we are having a patient with septic shock, what is the drug of choice out of these? Epinephrine or norepinephrine? The answer is norepinephrine. Why? Because in septic shock, the main pathology is vasodilation. So we need such drug which has a, a strong vasoconstrictor property and out of these the strong vasoconstrictor is the norepinephrine the strong vasoconstrictor is the norepinephrine and the norepinephrine when vasoconstrict the vessel so it can reward the shock or it can help in the symptomatic improvement of the shock the cure for this is to find out the cause and treat that in most of the cases it is infection but to, to, to treat symptomatically a septic shock that is the norepinephrine regarding the, the dosage I am coming up to that shock with LVF a patient is having left ventricular failure a patient is having left ventricular failure a patient comes to you in emergency department and he is in shock and you see the previous echo that contains ejection fraction is 20% or 30% so the compromised left ventricular function the patient is in shock which one is of choice dobutamine dobutamine why not dopamine let's suppose this is heart and this is left ventricle in the left ventricular dysfunction what happens the left ventricle it it has a weak force of contraction and this is the iota coming out of the left ventricle if the resistance is high if the resistance is high so it cannot push the blood against a high resistance it has to work more so we need a drug which dilates these blood vessels and also increase the force of contraction of the heart dopamine and dobutamine both increases the heart contractility but dopamine causes vasoconstriction dopamine causes vasoconstriction when the dopamine causes vasoconstriction what happened there is increased resistance to the left ventricle when there is increased resistance over here to the left ventricle the left ventricle has to work more and the left ventricle is already compromised so there is a further decompensation of left ventricle so instead of correcting shock it is causing more problem so with LVF or cardiogenic pulmonary edema this is very important cardiogenic pulmonary edema cardiogenic pulmonary edema one is the non cardiogenic pulmonary edema cardiogenic pulmonary edema a patient is having LVF and you listen to the heart bilateral crepts inspiratory fine in the lower zone so what are you going to do you are giving the butamine the butamine is causing vasodilation of the whistle arterioles and arteries so it decreases resistance in the whistle at the same time it increases the contractility so if it is increasing the contractility so what is it is doing it is increasing the cardiac output and it is increasing the shock it is not like that like that, that it is uh, uh, causing vasodilation so it is further deteriorating the shock mm, no it is increasing the contractility we know that blood pressure is equal to cardiac output into peripheral resistance so you are decreasing peripheral resistance but what you are doing you are increasing the cardiac output and this is the the basic pathophysiology in the cardiogenic shock
your heart is compromised so if you are treating the cause you are improving the cardiac output and you are improving the BP and if you are improving the BP you are improving the symptoms and if you are improving the symptoms you are improving the patient shock without LVF now if you start the butamine at low dose there is no response <coughs> you increase the dose still no response you can add dopamine with that and slowly increase that if still not maintaining BP then you are supposed to add norepinephrine then you are supposed to add norepinephrine but we have seen the patient there is dramatical improvement with the butamine provided that the cause is LVF sometimes there are two causes a patient is having LVF and the patient is having infection as well so a patient is having combination of both septic shock and shock with LVF the heart is not functioning so the cardiac output is decreased peripheral resistance is dramatically in decreased so in 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 those cases you have to add the butamine along with the butamine you have to give norepinephrine how do you differentiate between the cardiogenic shock and the septic shock clinically clinically you 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 differentiate between the two in the cardiogenic shock or the hypovolemic shock the peripheries are cold in the septic shock the peripheries the peripheries are warm warm to touch the patient is in shock but the peripheries are warm to touch so shock without LVF shock without LVF you are supposed to use if there is a shock without LVF dopamine of choice is dopamine so it has got both activity it increases resistance and it increases the cardiac output so it increases the BP by increasing the cardiac output and increasing the peripheral resistance if a person so shock without LVF of choice is dopamine if the BP is not improving you add the butamine if still not improving you add norepinephrine but the first of choice is dopamine in anaphylaxis in anaphylaxis what is the drug of choice adrenaline and why why not the norepinephrine the reason being in anaphylaxis we are having bronchospasm and we are having vasodilation so we are having two things if we give norepinephrine it will improve the shock it will improve the BP but the effect of norepinephrine at the beta 2 receptor in the airways or the pulmonary system is very weak so it cannot bronchodilate that much as the adrenaline is doing so adrenaline causes bronchodilatation and vasospasm causes vasospasm and act on the heart to increase the cardiac output increases the rate heart rate so it increases the cardiac output it increases the peripheral resistance it improves the BP and also it covers the chest so it covers the both so what is mean by the single support double support and triple support single support mean you start the patient along you start the patient according to these data first line patient is not improving you first add the increase the dose still the BP is not maintained you add another drug still the BP is not maintained you add another drug so if the patient is started on all of the three things dopamine dobutamine norepinephrine this is called triple support this is called triple support dual support mean person is on two drugs single support mean person is on single drug now coming toward the doses coming toward the dosage of dopamine <coughs> so forget about that long formula that is given in the books I have simplified it into this weight into 6 divided by 40 it will give you the answer in cc put that amount of cc and 100 cc normal saline for example a patient is having weight of 60 kg so 60 multiplied by 60 divided by 40 it gives 360 by 40 it gives 9 cc so this answer come from this so this 9 cc put it in either 91 cc of normal saline or put it in 100 cc of normal saline <coughs> that, that makes no difference 
when the idea is you have to put 9 cc into 91 cc normal saline to, to make final solution of 100 cc but that is not necessary <coughs> put this in 100 cc normal saline now how will you give this infusion to the patient if you need 1 to 5 microgram per kg per minute start with 1 to 5 ml per hour with the dial flow if you need 5 ml if you need 5 microgram per kg per minute so sit the dial flow with 5 ml per hour this is the renal dose it will cause renal vasodilation and increase the the renal blood flow and improve the urine output <coughs> if you need 5 to 15 microgram per kg per minute start on 5 to 15 ml per hour if you 10 if you need 10 microgram per kg per minute start on the 10 ml per hour on the dial flow if you need this is the cardiac dose at this at this dose it causes contract increase contractility of the heart and increase heart rate <clears throat> so it increase the cardiac rate increase blood pressure this is the way the pressure dose this is the way the pressure dose at way the pressure dose that is what 20 to 50 microgram per kg per minute if you need 20 to 50 you start on 20 to 50 ml per hour <clears throat> If you need 30 microgram per kg per minute, start on 30 ml per hour. If you need 40, start on 40. If you need 50, start on 50 ml per hour. Or you can start on the drops, the same amount of drops. 1 to 5 drops per minute, but that is per minute. 5 to 15 drops per minute. 20 to 50 drops per minute. <clears throat> this is regarding the dosage. So the dopamine comes in the strength of 200 by 5 the dopamine come in the strength of 200 by 5 so in one impule that is 5 ml that contains 200 milligrams so one ml has 40 milligram one ml has 40 milligram now for the butamine same formula applies weight into 6 divided by but that is 50 from where this 50 came the butamine comes under the strength of 250 by 5 so that gives us 50 the same formula applies for the butamine. So weight into 6 divided by 50, whatever answer comes that is that amount of cc of the butamine, put that amount of cc in 100 cc normal saline and start with, uh, at the rate of 10 ml per hour. Start at the rate of 10 ml per hour. Then you increase the dose up to 20 ml per hour, then 30 ml per hour, then 40 ml per hour. If the patient is maintaining BP at 10 ml per hour, no need to step up you have to step up when the person is not maintaining BP and if the person is maintaining the BP are going toward hypertension you have to approach the step down therapy coming toward the norepinephrine so coming toward the dosage of the norepinephrine so for the dopamine and the dobutamine I have simplified those doses and we can use according to those formulas because they are according to the weight but the dose of the norepinephrine that is not according to the weight that is 4 milligram uh, by 4 ml that is the strength and the initial loading dose is 8 to 12 microgram per minute this is not according to the weight the dose of the dopamine and the butamine that, that are according to, to the weight that is 5 microgram per kg per minute but this is 8 to 12 microgram per minute this is not according to the weight the maintenance dose is 2 to 4 microgram per minute initially the person need high dose so that he man, uh, he uh, gained the BP very quickly then there is a maintenance dose so, so that there is no further drop and you can up tight rate or down tight, down tight rate accordingly the goal is to keep the mean arterial pressure equal to or more than 65 mm of Hg now how do you calculate the dosage this is the formula you have to utilize it or someone come up with the simplified formula like the, the other two I will really appreciate so dose into 60 into volume of bag divided by 1000 into drug in bag volume of bag mean the volume of the infusion in which you are putting the drug and the drug in bag mean the total amount of drug that you have put in the in that infusion set like for example say I'm going to uh, put one impute in 100 cc normal saline 100 cc normal saline and put one impute so the volume of the bag will be 100 cc while drug in bag will be 4 milligram so let's suppose calculate the, the, the dosage the loading dosage for a person 
डोरिंग डोज इज एट टू ट्वेल्व माइक्रोग्राम सो लेट्स कैलकुलेट डोज फॉर द टेन माइक्रोग्राम टेन माइक्रोग्राम सो हाउ कैन वी गेव ए टेन माइक्रोग्राम पर मिनट सो पुट द वैल्यूज टेन इंटू सिक्सटी सिक्सटी इज फॉर कन्वर्जन द मिनट इंटू आवर इन टू वॉल्यूम आर बेग बिकॉज वी आर पुटिंग इट इन इट इन टू हंड्रेड एम एल नंबर सारे सो मल्टीप्लाई बाई हंड्रेड डिवाइडेड बाई थाउजेंड थाउजेंड इज टू कन्वर्ट दिस माइक्रोग्राम इन टू मेरीग्राम इन टू ड्रग इन बेग द ड्रग इन बेग इज वन इम प्यूल सो वन इम प्यूल इज इक्वल टू फोर मेरीग्राम सो दिस गेव सिक्सटी बाई फोर दिस गेव फिफ्टीन एम एल पर आर सो इफ यू नीड द लोडिंग डोज ऑफ टेन माइक्रोग्राम सो यू हैव टू स्टार्ट द इन्फ्यूजन बाई फिफ्टीन एम एल पर आर इफ यू हैव पुट इट इन हंड्रेड सी नंबर सारे वन इम प्यूल एंड This is the loading dose. If you need the maintenance dose, then you can calculate that from uh, by putting two or four or in between that four six. So uh, give the average of three. So put the three over here. So instead of ten, you give three. Or you can start with the five microgram. So the five microgram is actually the half of the ten. So the maintenance dose can be around six to seven ml per hour. So, if the person once again reaches the mean arterial pressure of equal to more than 65, so you drop this ml per hour to 5 to 7 ml per hour, yeah, 6 to 7 ml per hour. This is the maintenance dose. You can up titrate this dose also. Patient is not maintaining BP, you goes up. Even if at the full dose the person is not maintaining BP, look for occult blood loss. Look for occult fluid loss. Look for the fluid deficiency so you give fluids along with the norepinephrine a person is having profuse diarrhea and you are not replacing the fluid and rather you are replacing the norepinephrine it will not help the patient the rule is that whatever the patient is using replace that if the patient is using the blood replace with blood if the patient is using the the fluids replace the fluids so this is the basic criteria so this was the dosage for norepinephrine